Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and today we are finally reviewing The Dark Ray from Ernie Ball Music Man. Let's do this. This is The Dark Ray from Ernie Ball Music Man, and it needs no introduction. Taking the bass community by storm with its very, very unique feature set here for a Stingray. It's not something we really expected to see out of Ernie Ball Music Man, and it is a very nice surprise indeed, let me tell you. But before we begin, big thank you to friend of the channel and viewer Rob for sending in this Dark Ray to me to review. I really appreciate it. We will also be doing comparison videos with the Stingray Special as well as the Stingray Classic, so keep an eye out for those videos in the near future. But now, on to this magnificent Dark Ray here. What sets the Dark Ray apart from a regular Stingray Special is the preamp here. As you notice, there are five knobs and a three-way selector switch. This is for the proprietary dark glass preamp here. We have a two band EQ as well as an alpha and omega distortion circuit with separate gain and blend controls as well as our master volume. The gain control also has an LED ring around it which lights up whenever you have one of the two distortion circuits enabled from the uh, dark glass preamp that we have in here. A very neat touch. But now onto the specs of the Stingray Special. Don't Dark Ray. We have a selected hardwoods ash body here, lightweight body, with a sparkle finish here. I believe this is like the starry night finish. Absolutely gorgeous finish here. And that is paired to a classic Stingray oval pickguard in black. We have a neodymium humbucker here, as opposed to the El Nico pickups of the older Stingrays. And then we have the dark glass two band proprietary preamp with the alpha and omega circuits that you can only find here in the dark ray. The bridge is the same Stingray special style bridge, blacked out of course to match the rest of the blacked out hardware. Moving up to the neck, this is a Stingray special style neck, it's basically the same thing. We have a roasted maple neck with a 22 fret, 34 inch scale, ebony fingerboard. These are stainless steel frets, and we also have the proprietary compensated nut with the 41.3 millimeter nut width. On the other side of the neck, we have our truss rod adjustment wheel, which is an absolutely killer touch. This is my favorite way to adjust the truss rod. And then moving up to the headstock, we have four blacked out Music Man lightweight tuners and the Ernie Ball Music Man logo, as well as a Dark Ray logo. It doesn't say Stingray, it says Dark Ray. Now, let's go ahead and turn the space around. Around back, here's where things differ a bit from the regular Stingray Special 4H. Unlike the Stingray Special, which has the preamp mounted underneath the control plate with the front route, we have a large rear control cavity as well to house the selector switch as well as the larger dark glass preamp. Here is a picture of the preamp, the uh, internals of the whole Stingray Special dark glass preamp here. It is very different from your regular Stingray preamp, that's for sure. So we have a large control cavity with a metal cover here. We have the same 18 volt setup that we do in the Stingray Special and the same contoured neck heel, except we have a blacked out neck plate with the Dark Glass logo as well as the Music Man logo. A very neat touch. And then moving up to the neck, this is the same Stingray Special style neck with the proprietary gunstock oil wax finish that uh, they do here. And then moving up to the headstock, we have the four blacked out lightweight Music Man tuners. Now, how much does the Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Way, Dark Way weigh? And how much does the Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Ray weigh? I said it right this time. This bass comes in at 8.2 pounds, which follows the theme of being very lightweight with the Stingray Specials. The 2018 example, which I recently reviewed, actually I just reviewed it right before I'm shooting this, uh, comes in at 7.8 pounds. My Stingray Special Fretless comes in at 7.2 pounds. And then Pinky over here, I believe is around 8.4 or 8.6 pounds. So having this be 8.2 pounds is right in line with the other Stingray Specials. A very lightweight instrument for sure. Very nice. Now, as a new segment for 2023, we are going to see how this bass balances. In the lap without a strap, 
you do just get a very slight bit of neck dive depending on how you have it positioned on your knee. You're not fighting the neck ever, but it's there. However, once you put on a strap, you have absolutely no neck dive whatsoever, sitting or standing. And finally, how much does the Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Ray cost? I believe these come in at $27.99 from Ernie Ball directly. How does that compare to the Stingray Special? Well, the regular Stingray Special base model 4H with the black finish comes in at $24.99. But add the fancy sparkle finishes and you have a $200 premium to $26.99. And this has the fancy sparkle finish and is only $100 more. So overall, I think you are getting a lot for your money here, uh, especially compared to the regular Stingray Special, which is already a stellar bass for sure. But now I know you're all wondering, what does this bass sound like? You all know what you need to do. Go ahead and hit that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. So that's the Dark Ray, right? It just sounds like a regular Stingray special. But when you flick the switch and the circle glows an angry red here, you get this. <laughs> And then flick the switch once more and the circle turns from red to blue. And here's what you get. So this bass is a lot of fun, and we are going to be going through all the different controls and as many different tones as we can today. Let's flick the switch back to the circle offsetting, and that is the preamp bypassed. Well, at least the distortion circuits bypassed. Instead, we just have this two-band preamp here, a bass and treble control, that is a proprietary bit of this dark glass preamp. What you've heard thus far is everything centered. So let's just listen to that one more time and then we'll play with this EQ a little bit.
So that is with the preamp centered. Let's go ahead and cut everything now. Start from the bottom and work our way up. Yeah, so with the preamp all the way down, you definitely lose quite a bit of kick. But now let's turn the bass control up to center, leaving the treble at full cut. And now here is the bass at a 50% boost. And here's the bass all the way up. Very powerful preamp indeed. Let's go ahead and cut the bass control all the way now and bring our treble up to center with the bass at full cut. Let's crank the treble all the way, just for fun, why not? Uh, not too bright, and very much almost like a classic Stingray type of tone. Let's keep the treble cranked 100% and bring our bass control up to center. <laughs> okay, let's bring the uh, EQ back down to center and let's start playing with these dark glass circuits. Let's flip over to the first one. I, I forget which one is which. The red one. <laughs> Here's what this sounds like. EQ centered, gain all the way up and the uh, blend, wherever that is, all the way up as well. So we are full on in the uh, dark glass circuit here. Got a little carried away there. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is too much fun. I'm telling you, too much fun. Like Stingrays in general are very fun bases and I enjoy them greatly. And even with the DIY Dark Ray though, that was fun. This is like fully dialed in. And you have individual gain controls in the control cavity for each of the two circuits, allowing you to fine tune how much kick and oomph you got. And I think I got them close enough, but keep in mind, you have a lot of headroom for both of these circuits. A lot. Trust me. <laughs>
Now let me show you the impact of the blend control. So right now the blend is all the way up, meaning we are fully engaging the dark glass overdrive distortion whatever circuit. Let's go ahead and turn that all the way down. <laughs> Stingray tone. And then when we start turning it, we start blending in the dark glass angry circuit. Let's uh, blend a little bit more. It's impossible not to make a face when, when you play this bass. Impossible. Okay, uh, now let's play with the gain control, leaving the blend fully on. So let's turn that all the way down now and see what happens. You don't really get much of anything. So in my opinion, I'd probably keep the blend and the overdrive gain over here maxed out most of the time if I was playing with these circuits and just uh, tailoring the gains in the internal cavity. That being said, it is nice to have the options to kind of go between the, the clean and the dirty circuits without just having a zero or one and actually having some linearity there. That's a very nice touch. So very cool with the blend control, very cool with the gain control. Let's play with this EQ a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the treble and I'm going to boost the bass about uh, 50%. Let's see what that sounds like. can get a very like doomy kind of angry tone. Now let's cut the bass about 50% and boost our treble about 50% now. So yes, a lot of flexibility here with this EQ, even with the whole uh, distortion and overdrive, you have a ton of different tones to choose from. And these are just some of the little extremes that I have here. You have a, just a ton of flexibility. But for the sake of time and to keep things moving, let's go ahead and flick the switch over once more and engage the blue circuit. I think this is the Omega, the other one is the Alpha. I don't know much about computers. <laughs> Yes, also very gnarly. I think the red circuit was a bit more, I guess, low mid slash bass oriented, where this is a bit more high mid and a bit more growly, a bit different in character for sure. And I like having those options. 
So again, let's just mess with the blend control one more time. Stingray tone. Now let's play with this gain control. fun. <laughs> now let's do our two little EQ configs. I'm going to cut the treble entirely and then boost the bass about 50% to get a doomier kind of sound. Very angry indeed, yes. <laughs> Now let's cut the bass about 50% and b -b 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 do the uh, treble boost about 50%. <laughs> and bothered here, eh? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and uh, center our EQ now, and I'm gonna just play this bass with a pick in all three settings. So let's start with the clean mode. <laughs> up, here is the red circuit, I believe the alpha. And here's the omega. put the pick away and let's slap it. I'll leave the EQ centered and we'll slap it in all three configurations. First, here's clean. <laughs> Next up, the red circuit. Okay, th this isn't even worth it. Here, here's the blue one too. Yeah, no, no, no. 
<laughs> and finally, let's throw some drums behind this bass. See how that goes. So here are my final thoughts on the Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Ray. Wow. <laughs> this exceeds all my expectations. I thought at the beginning that it was definitely a bit of a gimmick, and it sort of is, but it is an effective one for sure. These are very usable circuits, and you can really tailor them to get some really gnarly tones, as well as just have a very good stingray outside of that. The two-band EQ is wonderful in the clean setting and does a lot to shape the angry tones when you have the Alpha and Omega circuits engaged. So yes, a ton of flexibility here and all for a very small premium over a sparkly finished Stingray Special 4H. So what am I going to rate the Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Ray? Ugh. I'm gonna rate this bass. Five claws out of five. What a base. I am so impressed with the dark ray. The fit and finish just Everything about it in regards to the quality of the electronics, the stellar build quality that you'd expect from a Stingray Special. Just everything about this bass is absolutely phenomenal and I have so much fun playing it. Now I will be doing some comparison videos with our Stingray Classic as well as our Stingray Special to just have these back to back and see what they sound like if there's any real discernible differences. Both the Stingray Classic and the Dark Ray here have two-band preamps as opposed to the three-band of the Stingray Special and regular pre-2017 Stingrays. Uh, so that is one similarity, though the Dark Ray has center detents, the Stingray Classic does not. And the Stingray Special in this bass share a neodymium pickup, the same style Stingray neodymium pickup that you get in all the other Stingray Specials. I believe it's the same pickup here, but what you get is the magic behind the scenes here in the preamp. One minor gripe about this is the control plate on the back. I wish that there had been some like threaded inserts or something extruding to hold the plate in place as you're securing it, as it can kind of slide all over the place. And the Stingray Special does have a bit of a curvy body, so it's not really a flat surface. One just minor gripe there, and outside of that, I think this is an absolutely phenomenal instrument. Phenomenal. I love it. I absolutely love it. But let me know what you think about the Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Ray down in the comments below. And again, big thank you to viewer and friend of the channel Rob for sending me this Dark Ray to review. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, and join our Discord channel, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the Ernie Ball Music Man Dark Ray. And as always, until we groove again.